Well, hello, it's Wednesday morning, and today we are going to read some of Psalm 78. It's 72 verses long. We're going to read through verse 20. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, but tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers to teach their children that the next generation might know him. The children yet unborn and arise to tell them to their children so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and that they should not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, <clears throat> whose spirit was not faithful to God. The Ephraimites, armed with the bow, turned back on the day of battle, they did not keep God's covenant, but refused to walk according to his law. They forgot his works and the wonders that he'd shown them. In the sight of their fathers, he performed wonders in the land of Egypt, in the fields of Zoan. He divided the sea and let them pass through it and made the waters stand like a heap. In the daytime, he led them with a cloud and all the night with a fiery light. He split rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. He made streams come out of the rock and caused waters to flow down like rivers. Yet they sinned still more against him, rebelling against the Most High in the desert. They tested God in their heart by demanding the food that they craved. They spoke against God, saying, Can God spread a table in the wilderness? He struck the rock so that water gushed out and streams overflowed. Can he also give bread or provide meat for his people? What do you think? Can he do that? I think he did. So it goes on like that for another 50 verses. A um, couple of notes. Uh, I don't know where the fields of zone are, but I guess it's somewhere over there near the Nile. Um uh, near the Egyptian side of the wilderness, anyway. The Ephraimites are the northern kingdom. So when this was written, the Ephraimites were kind of the enemies of the Judeans. And I mean, they're sort of enemies and sort of friends and sort of not happy with each other. So the Ephraimites, those people over there, they turned back from battle, but he did not. I think that's a way to look at it. Well, it says they forgot his works, and then it starts to enumerate them and basically goes back and goes over the entire history of Israel from the Passover night all the way through, coming through the sea, coming into the wilderness, escaping from the enemy, and God protected them, and God did all these things. It said God split a rock so that water poured forth. Now, Moses actually did that at God's command. God said, take your staff and hit that rock, and he did. And when he did, water poured out of it. Um, and then in verse 20, it says he did that. So can he also give bread or provide meat for his people? Well, a couple of chapters later, what does God do? Anyone? Anyone? God provides manna which is Hebrew for what is that? And the manna, as we call it, um, was this stuff that fell from the sky and you could eat it. And it sustained the people for, um, for quite a while. <clears throat> they could eat it for one day and then it spoiled. And so the next day there'd be more. And um, God fed the people that way. Now, the part of the story that we don't remember quite as much as the manna is the um, quails in the evening. The, the wilderness would be full of quails and they'd go out and 
shoot a quail with their with arrows, I guess, and eat the quail. So they had meat and they had this manna, which they called bread. It was, we don't know what it was. They didn't know what it was, but it was something that fell out of the sky um, that uh, was nutritious. And so they saw it as a miracle because it was there when they needed it. Miracles are often like that. We say, well, yeah, that's just something that happened. But uh, C.S. Lewis, I think, said it was, it was who said, um, miracles might be coincidence, but I know that coincidences happen much more frequently when I pray. So there you go. So take their psalm. Read the rest of it today. Read the rest of what God d- does and did and see um, what you can pick up from the Old Testament stories that you've read and see what is listed here in the psalm. Remember that Israel's praise is always most effective when it comes as they tell their story, and so they're telling their story here. What story do you have to tell? Think about that today, and think about um, what God has done for you. Even it might seem to be a coincidence, but Somehow the timing was right and you needed it, so it was a good thing. Do that. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.